Hey y'all. Oh Lord, here comes Chantal. What? Nothing. We just know you always with the shit. And is. So what you got for us this time? Oh, you know, just a little hookah, a little drink for our conversation. Well, what else is new? This episode. So let's get to it. This episode of The Glass Mic was brought to you by Nipyata. Nipyata was launched for all the adults out there who refuse to grow up. You know who you are. You appreciate a good laugh, a great party, and some old-fashioned tomfoolery. Nipyata is built for the fun ones. Your Nipyata can be completely personalized for your smashing pleasure. Visit Nipyata online at www.nipyada.com Use code the glass mic for a special discount. Right now, Nip Yada is offering a partnership collab with Dented Brick Distillery, Disco Ball. This Disco Ball includes 15 bottles of their coconut rum inside. They also do a lot of work for the LGBTQ community. But don't take my word for it. Go on their website or on their Instagram. N-I-P-Y-A-T-A. Nip Yada. Again, use code the glass mic. And as always, I love y'all. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to another episode of The Glass Mic, where there is no script, just transparent talk. I'm Chantal Says It All, and I got my hair done. It went with PPP long money, so I'm good. I don't have to wash my back. I just have to look back at it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have no filter. That's all right, <laughs> So y'all, y'all know I love recording late at night. So it is actually 10, well, it was 10 o'clock on the dot. It's now 10.01. I don't know what time it'll be when y'all here, but I hope that you are in a good mood when you do because we are in a great mood. And I know y'all like, who is we? You got somebody on the show? YouTube, of course, y'all already see who this is. But before I introduce him, we got to do trying-ish. Trying shit trying shit. Trash it, trash it, don't work. Trash it, trash it, won't work. Try so we're trying this, as y'all know. These are products that aren't paid ads. Some products were sent in and some were paid for by the Glass Mic. If you know someone that has a product or service, or if you have a product or service, make sure you send that in to info at theglassmic.com or DM the Glass Mic on Instagram or Facebook. And we will go from there. Are you hungry, guest? Uh, a little bit. A little did bit. Did you just hear my stomach growl? No, I did not. <laughs> the headphones spared you, but I nah, asked. I'm good. I can hold that. What's up? I asked because I have a new sponsor called Cinnaholic, and they have vegan cinnamon rolls. Okay. Now, I know, I don't know if you, I think you told me earlier you never had vegan. Mm -mm. And this week, I'm fasting, y'all, so y'all don't see the happy candy or the hookah this time around. But I am eating vegan, and we got some samples from them. I know you told me you like chocolate. Yeah, I'm chocolate. So let me yeah, show the YouTube right. folks. Look, he reaching out already. This is the Chocoholic Cinnamon Roll. It has Oreos, chocolate, and everything is 100% vegan. This is yours. I got it all warmed up Thank and cute you. for you. I myself, I like chocolate too, but you know, I'm a fruit vegan. girl tonight. So this one is the strawberry, strawberry cheesecake. I made it nice. Cineholic, if y'all want to hire me part-time to dress up the cinnamon rolls, let me know. So, of course, I told you, you can eat on the show if you want to smack and eat your food while, you, um, while you're while you on here. You can. I actually got your knife. That's yours. I, I didn't mess with it. I don't think I'm going to eat too much. You don't have to. You could take some home or you could just sample a cute piece so of So, the chocolate and the bun is vegan. Every single thing is vegan. Okay. Since you said you've never had vegan food, I want to take a pause and let you have your first bite. And be honest, if you don't like it, just say, you know, it's not uh, my I'm cup of tea. You if you... truth. I ain't lie We're to very you. honest on here. I've had their cinnamon rolls. My favorite one is the um, caramel apple. It tastes like regular chocolate. Yeah, it's, it's good. I ain't ate the bun. I eat the bun later. I'm going to eat the uh -oh. rest of it. I done put it on my shirt. 
Yeah, I'm good. I like it. You like it? Mm -hmm. So, if y'all want to try the location, oh. look. <laughs> It's hard. We got the ASMR going. The audio, like, what the? We smacking? Mm hmm. I haven't eaten all day because I'm only eating plant based foods. So, foods that aren't from an animal. So, no meat, no dairy. And earlier today, I had an impossible burger, which was like plant based meat. It was really good. From Burger King? No, I haven't. I didn't. I, okay, I have had the impossible Whopper. That's another thing, sir. We don't name drop on this show unless oh, they want to sponsor. So now I got to email Burger King because we just said something about y'all. My bad. <laughs> we just said something about y'all. But no, seriously, I had the burger today. And that was earlier. And like I said, now it's 10 o'clock. I'm hungry. So I'm going to do my best to keep it cute. But if y'all see me smacking and eating a cinnamon roll from time to time, go on Cineholic Richardson. That's C I N N A. H O L I C Richardson R I C H A R D S O N or Cineholic McKinney spelled the same way, but McKinney is M C K I N N E Y. Go on their Instagram so you can see how good the cinnamon rolls look and let them know the glass mic sent you. Now, right now, at the time of this recording, they do have a limited edition Cineholic cookie cake and it's 100% vegan too, so it is a sinless delight. So, if you're trying to watch your figure for hot girl summer, but you want a sweet treat too, get it. It smells good. You smell it? Yeah. It smell like regular cookies, right? Mm -hmm. It's still hot girl summer? What What else should it be? I thought that was last year. So, what's this summer? When, I don't know. What do you want this summer to be? Y'all got to come up with a new slogan. Who is y'all? Hot girl summer. Oh, okay, what do you call the ladies this summer? Casino summer? Casino Lady Summer? Yeah, Casino Life Summer. There we go. Look, I done no gave doubt. him an I'm going to send him an email next. <laughs> <laughs> so I know y'all like, okay, she done switched it up. Got the black hair. So I want to shout out to Tori for Infinite Co. She is the lady behind this hair company. I just got it done today by a good friend named Rob. So I'm going to give y'all the Instagram name for her. It's I-N-F-I-N. A N D C O, and the friend that did my hair for me, his Instagram is underscore split image, the way it's spelled, another underscore. So that's underscore S P L I T I M A G E underscore. Let them both know that the glass mic sent you. Last but not least, for trying ish, I know y'all see my Juneteenth shirt. Now, by the time this recording is launched, Juneteenth will have passed and gone, but as um, I don't know if you keep up with the news or anything, but we are now waiting for President Biden to sign off Juneteenth to be an official uh, national holiday that's observed. That. That's yes. Hard, Shout yes. Out to him. yes. So, letting y'all know that. So, this is a Juneteenth shirt that she sells. And also, she sent me these great pennies. Y'all know I don't really talk too, too much about the Greek life, but y'all know Team Delta over here. She sent me my elephant pendants. And she also has these beautiful incense holders. I don't know if you all burn incense or not. My mom sends me some all the time, so it was right on time. So I can't wait to burn my incense with those. So if you're interested in seeing her products or getting one of her t-shirts, her Instagram is A-L-L-T-I-N-G-S-B-E-E-E. -E -E -E, all things B. Again, let everyone know that the glass mic sent you. If I took y'all too fast, no worries. I will have these um, sponsors on the Instagram page. And I've now created a highlight called Sponsors. So you'll be able to access current and previous trying ish segments. So are you ready for Shot O'Clock? Yep. Okay. So again, I'm fasting. So I know y'all like, okay, what is this? It does not look like wine. It's a little light of red. This is actually New Age by Noni. And it's a, how do I explain? You know how you know what something is, but you can't put it into words? Right. So basically, it's a super fruit wellness booster. I take a shot of this every day. And as you all can tell, I have been drinking. It's not nothing, of course, with all products, I use them before I talk. And some of the conditions that some of the customers have said it helped them with was allergies, uh, decreased symptoms, depression, which I know I I don't claim it, but I do have it. Um, it also helps with weight loss and sleep improvement. I will say that 
as previous episodes, I've told my people, the people I call them, mm-hmm. um, I've been having insomnia lately. Yeah. And since I've been taking these shots, I'm not saying that my insomnia is cured, but I do go to bed on time with the exception of tonight. Yeah. So <laughs> don't just take my advice. If you all are more interested Hold in up, finding that helps with it. this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm hiding my bottle because what you're not going to do is take my bottle. I can tell you how to get your <laughs> own bottle. <laughs> Hold on one second, sir. So, if you're interested in getting the Noni by New Age, you can contact Miss Boney Smith. And her website is www.noinewage.com forward slash 470-7153. If that was too complicated for you, I got you. You can text her. Only about Noni, you could text her 601-260-9296. And with that being said, we are going to take our shots. You and your mystery cup? Yeah. Cheers. Keep it a secret. Okay. Now, I will say, this is a warning. If you decide to get the, the Noni, keep it refrigerated at all times it does taste good but it does have like a little aftertaste and that's with it cold so i don't know how it's gonna be room temp so don't say i didn't tell you can i ask you a question you just did <laughs> yeah <laughs> I like that i like that uh do they got different flavors or is that one flavor like noni i'm gonna give you her contact information because i ain't know if you wanted to tell i was just saying I, honestly one of my favorite things to say is, I don't know, but I can find out. No doubt. But I'm going to let you find out and let you get the information. Okay. If I knew, I'd tell you, I'm not being an ass about it. Oh, no, Lord, I'm good. sorry. I'm cursing on like my face. I asshole energy. That make me comfortable. Okay. Well, since since we're doing that, let's go ahead and go into our icebreaker. It looks like we really don't need to break in the ice, so we don't have to do too much. So I'm going to give you an option because I know men like options. No doubt. Yeah. So you could do truth or drink, or would you rather, or things you should know. Uh. <laughs> would you? Well, truth or drink. Okay. So. Savage truth. Truth or truth. So truth or drink. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna let you set the tone, so you can ask me a question, and I decide to take tell the truth, or I take a shot of the noni. Oh. Okay. So, ask me whatever you want. Anything. Rate it. PG to rate it R. Uh, okay, yeah, because Anonymous Source uh, wanted me to ask this question to a woman. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's about marriage. Like, do you think marriage is overrated? Marriage is overrated? Yeah. I feel that if you're going to be in marriage, you should do it for the right reason. Now, if you're only doing it because you have a biological clock, like, oh my gosh, I'm turning 30, all my friends getting married, then you're wrong. Like, it's overhyped in that aspect. But if it's a person that you're dating, like your partner, and you don't see yourself with anyone else, it's not a settling. It's not, oh, we've been together 10 years or 30 years. It's this is literally like my life partner. Like, this is the person I go to to tell good news to first, to bad news. I could talk to them about anything. Mm-hmm. I could do anything with them. Then, no, it's not overhyped. I still believe in marriage, as you all know or might have an idea. I am now uh, single again. I don't I don't claim the title divorced mm-hmm. because I don't speak that over my life. Even though if someone asks me am I married, I'm going to tell them not anymore, of course. Right. But I'm going to be married again one day. You know, look, look at this. Look at this. This will not be on the market for long. I used to sell cars, and it will have the, like these Ford Lariats and Raptors. Yeah, we cannot keep them on the lot for long, and that's how I feel. I feel like I have a lot. I come with a lot of greatness, oh, yeah. and I don't think marriage is overhyped. I believe in it, and I say, listen, y'all, if you're single or if you're not married anymore, let's keep the faith. I don't think it's overrated either. You don't? Nah. Cool. I love happiness. Love as long as you're the right person, I don't believe in rushing it and forcing people to, you know, go into sticky situations. Yeah, I definitely I wouldn't rush. Though. I wouldn't rush. And it's in the same breath, everyone's time frame is different. Exactly. Some people can get married in one year and be together a lifetime. Some people may wait five years. Right. So I don't want anyone to think 
okay, I've been with my partner for five, six years now, no engagement ring, do they really like me? Of course, you use your discernment, which is your natural judgment of if you think this relationship is going somewhere or not. But there's no need to rush. I mean, just look at me. You can use me as a perfect example. I am 29. I'll be 30 in October. Mm -hmm. So, of course, remember earlier I was talking about some women like, oh, I'm, I got a rush because in my mind when I was 28, I was thinking, okay, 2021, I'm 29, I'll be 30. I'm probably going to, you know, get my first house, get pregnant, all of that stuff. I'm already on board for the right. 30 train. But I'm starting humanly. I, I talk about spirituality too. But humanly, I look like, okay, I'm starting back over. Which, of course, I don't expect by the time I get 30 in October to be married again. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I have a new sense of energy. I have a new way of life as far as how I look at myself. As I told my father on the last episode, I learned to love myself for mm -hmm. the first time. So I'm very eager to see what God has in store for me. Already. Mm -hmm. He's good. trying to hide his emotions with these ray beans, but trust and believe I'm going to poke the bear. I'm going to let him show his emotion. <laughs> He did the little nervous lip rub. I got him. Yes, uh, she funny. Thank you. So I guess it's my turn to ask you a question, yeah. a truth or drink question. Let's see. A hard one. A hard one. <laughs> Do you feel, since I'm going to mirror what you said, do you feel that men decide if the relationship goes to marriage or not? Uh, I think a man should. But as far as how things are going these days, I don't think that they do. I think that because a lot of times I don't feel like men speak up on the things that they want or mm -hmm. how they feel about certain things. Like they just settle for what the woman want that they don't want to lose. Because a lot of times women put them on a the time schedule. Like if you don't step up now, I'm going to leave you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the dude would just go ahead and propose and he know he ain't ready. And he probably still out here cheating. And that's why I think I think that's why the divorce rate is so high because people rush it. But yeah. I think a man should be able to dictate that. Cause cause I feel like we it take us longer to even mature. Y'all already y'all mature faster than us. And y'all be ready for certain things even in life in general than we is at a different pace. So I feel like you gotta do it on a on a man turn. Okay. Especially if you're a good dude. If he if he ain't if he ain't nothing, then yeah, do away with him. But if you're a good dude, have patience. Okay. I, I feel you. Now we can go in all day on the subject of relationships, love, marriage, but I did put a topic out for the people earlier today and it was just off of performance anxiety. Mm -hmm. Now we can take that wherever we want to take it. I'm not saying we have to talk about work related performance anxiety. It can be performing in a relationship or performing as far as content because I know that you do freestyles and stuff, right? Right. So it could be on that level, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you some of the questions that I ask the people and we're going to go from there. Okay. Cause we broke the ice side already, you know? Yeah, let's do we it. We broke it before we even started recording. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the first question I asked, this is a statistics question. So I want to let you guess the number. Okay. Now I don't want to put pressure on you, but we've had some mathematicians come on the show. We also had some people who sound like they flunked math a couple of times. Okay. <laughs> So the first question was, do you have performance anxiety? Examples, doing anything in front of a person or persons that's business or personal. What percentage do you think said yes? And what percentage do you think said no? Uh, 89%. Say what? They, they do have performance anxiety. 89%? Yeah. Okay, I know... <laughs> My baby Bella runs the show. I do this for her, honestly. And she's brought three of her toys out already. Of course, y'all can't see her on... Bella uh, knows good energy, y'all. Yeah. yeah, Bella knows good energy. She just loves everybody, too. But, yeah, she done brought three of her toys out. And I'm going to go ahead and answer the question. <laughs> I'm going to answer the question because she has me so distracted. Y'all, I'm, I'm wild by her. So, 57% said yes. They lying, though. How are you going to tell somebody how they feel? 
Okay. I ain't, I ain't gonna do y'all like that, but I don't feel like that's true. I, but if if but I I'm say wrong. okay, so, so if we say if it was a poll right now and it was me and you, right? Mm -hmm. And the question was, do you have performance anxiety? And I say yes, and you say no. That means fifty percent say yes, fifty percent say no. You're telling me that I'm not oh, right about okay, how I okay. feel. Okay, okay, nah, you right, you right, you right. So I'm wrong. I admit that. See, look, that's something that women can't do. That's a whole nother topic. Women Let's can't do what? Say we were wrong. Huh? Most most women can't. I know I'm very accountable. Yeah. If I'm wrong, I tell I you. I could tell. I know that already. Yeah, I'm about to break movie. a barrier with him. I'm trying to put y'all on game, but y'all not put Most the guests on the same thing. He's going to leave. He's going to leave the show tonight looking at women in a different light. Because <laughs> there's some good ones and there's some bad ones, but not yeah, all of them. I love women, are. but I'm saying a lot of women don't hold themselves accountable. You haven't met the right one. They'll argue a lot. You haven't met the right one. So, I asked another question. I said, Wendy, well, before I asked that one, I want, because I need to know what your definition of performance anxiety is. So, what made you think that a lot of them didn't feel like they had it? Okay. Can you break down your definition of performance? So, like, performance is anxiety. Like being nervous before you do something? Right. So, let's just say, for example, with the show. Um, I might get the heebie-jeebies like, oh, I really don't want to record. For example, the show is pre-recorded. Right. So I don't get nervous about that because if I mess up something, I could just edit it to a read, look, snip it out, and right. I'm good. Right. But if this was on IG Live, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, I'm going to have performance anxiety because once I say something or do something, it's out there, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, If I was on the stage, maybe at this age right now, I'm so used to, I know everybody in their mama. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I know everybody in their mama in doses. But if all of those people were in one room at one time, I might have a little performance anxiety. And that's when Happy Candy comes in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we don't have Happy Candy tonight. But yeah, so that that was my example. And then also, it could be in a relationship. Like, let's just say if you're dating and you've never been intimate with that person before. And you might be like, oh, I don't know if they're going to like this. How did the people look before me? Are they going to be disappointed? Yeah. That could be a form of performance anxiety, yeah. too. So it's really on what you, you know, determine your definition of performance anxiety is. But that's why I said 89% because I feel like most people, do, it just depends on the situation. Because mm -hmm. I do in certain situations. Like but what? most of the time I'm comfortable. But certain situations I'm nervous. What certain I think situations? it's good to be nervous. Like, like I, I do music. Like, even, like, right before I perform, I'm nervous. But, but right when I go on there, I turn into a whole different person. Like, it just, like, all that just went away. As soon as I go on stage, it's just gone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, we answered that one. The next one was, when did you realize you had performance anxiety? Um, I'm going to read some of the responses. I got to that Noni. Oh, that's another thing. That Noni would get you right. That Noni, you know how you drink a soda like a ginger ale or Sprite and it gives you a good belch? Yeah. That Noni does the same thing. I don't know what's in it because it's not a city, but it gets you right. So I'm reading responses. When I had to, when I had class presentations, when I was 13 and had to do a speech for graduation, I sped right through every word. College. When I started to say, um, more than I should or anticipate. In school, I always got anxiety before presenting our game or before games. When interviewing a higher position by my current supervisor, I have to listen to certain songs to get in the zone. If I don't listen to them, I will feel horrible. I don't have it, but I do get nervous when I have to be in a new environment. I've also got the sweats before public speaking. It never stopped me, though. During the Miss JSU pageant, shout out to you, girl, because I ran for Miss Jackson State, too, and I did not get out the pageant. <laughs> In high school, I could sing during rehearsal, but I froze during the actual play. Having to speak in front of a class at church. Ooh, church, yeah. They used to program PTSD. When I was younger and used to be forced to give presentations in class, so the book pretty much said in, around those social settings like school or work. Mm -hmm. What about you? When did you realize you had performance anxiety? Uh, it was probably in school, like like when I had a speech class. Like when you got to go up and present whatever you, you know, that was, that's when I realized. 
Yeah. Um, with my performance anxiety, it's weird. Let me take that back. First time ever trying to court a girl. Probably like growing up, like liking a girl and don't know. But that's the better story. Tell that one. We want to hear something that they didn't say. Yeah, like growing up and like knowing a girl that I like and don't know what to say to her. Like, so I want to hear the story. I just want to eat my cinna holic. Well, I, I don't remember. Just give us. You don't have to go word for word. But just tell us like what made you nervous? Were you afraid that she was gonna reject you? Like what made you have the? Perform- I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, I don't think my confidence was there. Because I, like, when when I first, it was, like, young, like, you know, like, when you were in probably, like, second grade or something like that. I never had the experience of talking to girls, so I didn't know how it would turn out. I didn't know if she liked me. Did she like so, you? Yeah, she ended up, yeah, I found out that she liked me. So they I had, just showed I gave a friend a letter to give to her. And then, you know, how we used to do in school, yes or no type of thing, mm-hmm. circle it. And she said, yeah. And then since then, I st- that's when I started getting more confident. Because back then, light-skinned, like dark-skinned dudes wasn't attractive. It don't matter how you look. Light-skinned dudes was in. So I felt like I wasn't attractive because I was dark-skinned. Like early on in my life. Oh. But now I embrace it. That's the lick. Yeah, I would say you got to embrace no matter what tone you <laughs> well, are. I'm grown now. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I just know, like, if a girl don't like me now, like, she just That's ain't her problem. Me. Yeah, yeah, she just ain't for <laughs> me. Like, that ain't my problem. So, I don't read too deep into it. But when I was younger, like, first getting started, like, I was nervous. I think everybody was. And that was actually a good answer. It was different. Yeah. Because most people said school or work, so. I agree with you. Right. On that one. Um, let me see. A moment for me. When did I realize I had performance anxiety? Well, sometimes I have it now. Um, I say, um, because I have this deep Southern dialect, it's certain words that don't sound right. Like my friend, my line sister has been getting on me about saying together. Mm-hmm. I say together. Like it's a D yeah, in it for yeah. me when I talk. And I've been working on just slowing down talking and making sure my words flow smooth. For who though? Well, honestly, I don't want my message to go so fast where people can't process it because mm-hmm. I'm talking. Because if I'm talking fast like this now and then trying to hurry up and get a message across, they're like, what? What is she saying? Because uh, this is how fast I will talk. Right. But to me, I sound like I talk regular. I'm about to slow it down now. <laughs> That's how I would talk. Yeah. And I'm still working on it. Even tonight, I'm working on that with the episodes. So I'm, I don't delete episodes. Well, I deleted one. But for the most part, I don't delete episodes because I want to see the growth that I had as well as the followers see my growth. Right. So when I get to the point of arrival, it won't be like I was an overnight success. Like, no, this took time. It right. was like a plant. It had to right. water and grow. I'm with it. So the next poll question I'm going to ask you, which comes with more anxiety? Pre-performance or post-performance? So, before I let you guess the poll answers, pre-performance is like, do you have more anxiety before whatever you're about to do? Or do you have anxiety afterward wondering what did people think? Before? Because once I perform, I already know what I did. Okay. Yeah. So, what percent do you think said before and what percent do you think said after? I'm gonna say that one the big one too. Like, uh, I don't know how, I don't know, damn near 90 some percent. Because I feel like, especially now, it mm-hmm. just depends on when you talk about like this days. I feel like more people care about what people think about them, period. Like, especially with social media, like people will put a post up if you get one like that, delete it. So I feel like that's like, man, that's damn near 100 <laughs> percent. But I would say, damn near 90, 90 something. This episode of The Glass Mic was brought to you by Her Candle Company. Her Candle Company, providing eccentric and one-of-a-kind candles, natural, hand-poured soy candles. For more information, go on www.hercandlecompany.com or on Instagram, Her Candle Company. She has a wide range of candles, and right now, her bestseller is the Pride Candle. 
but don't just take our word for it go check them out back to the show yes so y'all guess what he got it right. 89% said pre and 11% said pose. Yes. The the other day, I posted a picture of myself. I went to one of my sorors' baby shower. And I don't post too many pictures of myself. I like my stories. I love when people come and watch stuff on my story because it's more intimate. I have more personal engagement. And no one knows my watches. So, yeah. for all they know, they could be the only one watching or they could be one of thousands watching. Right. Right. But when I posted on my page, I got anxiety and I didn't know where it came from. Again, I recently um, became single again. So I had anxiety from, okay, who's coming on my page to see what's going on with me? Who's liking a picture just to try to make a gateway to talk to me? Because I don't want to talk to you if I haven't talked to you. Right. Um, so I did get a lot of anxiety from that. Now, as far as the like counts, I don't take those serious, honestly, because I don't... My average picture might get somewhere between 150 to maybe 250 likes at best. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean anything. But I have over 5,000 followers. Mm -hmm. But the likes on my posts, those are small numbers. But my story views exceed the likes. Exactly. Exactly. So, one thing I used to do, I would make a video. Instead of like having a standstill post picture, I would just screen record my picture and make it a video mm -hmm. and that way to go from likes to views oh, okay. that's when i cared i'm yeah. at a point now where i don't care um so instagram that has an option i don't know if everyone has to update but it now has an option where you can hide the like count mm -hmm. so it'll say the glass mic and others like your post mm -hmm. and you can see your like count but the followers won't see you i really don't care too much to do that you don't. Okay. I think men might be a little different than women on that. Do you think so? Probably. You think so? Yeah. So, I'm going to take a quick break on answering the questions. I forgot to mention on my platform, this is actually a double win right now because we're doing two podcasts in one. Yeah. And I really want them to get to know you a little more in your show and what you do. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to just tell us quickly about what your operations about first of all rude she ain't even told you my name yet my name is shane oh uh, <laughs> you see normally i could blame it i could blame it on the happy candy or the hookah or yeah. the shot i don't have anything to blame it on that was just me moving too fast yeah. i apologize it's all good but my name is shane o. my brand is casino life empire my podcast is the savage truth t-r-o-o-f and yeah I'm just here to uh, be disruptive. I'm here to disturb the peace. It's working. <laughs> it's working. I have to eat the strawberry. Calm down. Yeah, but I don't appreciate you clapics. having me, though. But, but, yeah. I really came here, You know, like I told you before, because I talk about a lot of relationship topics on my podcast. Mm -hmm. And most of it be from a male perspective. So, it might feel like you bashing women because nobody here to defend women. So mm. that's why I connected with you, so you can have a rebuttal for. Our you needed me to help save you from getting beat up. Nah, cause I feel like a lot of women know what I'm saying is true, but even the men wouldn't back me up on that because they don't speak their mind in their relationship. But behind closed doors, you know, like when the homies together, they probably all agree. But when they woman around, nah, bro, you wrong. Like she don't even know who you are because you don't even tell her the truth. Mm -hmm. So she really in love with somebody. She on, she in love with a whole different dude. And that goes to the point with the marriage thing. Like, yes, it's real, but you have to be transparent. Exactly. Because we are human. And one thing I know for sure, for certain, I'm going to do something that you don't like. But exactly. And I'm going to say something that you don't like. But the whole time, I'm honest with you. And I allow you to make those decisions of if you want to rock with me or if you want to part ways. I feel like women do that. I feel like women are good with that. They'll let a man know what they want and what they don't like and what they do like. For the most part, women be they self. Unless she like one of them creepers. Like they cheat and all that. But men She's a runner. She's a trap They don't want they they don't especially if they they with the girl that they always been chasing, they gonna uh suppress a lot of that their emotions. When they feel a certain way, because they don't want to lose the woman. Mm. 
Mm. Like, say if a, if a woman want to get married and he don't believe in it, he probably not going to speak up on it. Because he, he don't want her to go, go try to find someone else. Because he don't want to lose her. And see, I don't recommend it. I don't either. That's what I be talking about. Because regardless, as a woman, my heart is going to get broken if you don't want to marry me. And my heart is going to be broken if you marry me and decide it was a mistake. So regardless, my heart is going to be broken. Exactly. You get to give me a soft blow or you can knock me out. Right. No one deserves to be knocked out. Yeah. So... Okay. Happiness is cool, but if it ain't genuine, if it ain't real, like I really don't, I don't appreciate that. Okay. So we got to know him a little more, and I'm not gonna hit him aside that he was this iPad <laughs> calling me rude. He could have just said I forgot his name. Respectfully. Respect. Nah, no disrespect. <laughs> I ain't gonna use the young words respectfully. That ain't even me, but uh, no disrespect. Okay, no disrespect taken. No, I apologize because I'm telling you, I moved so fast on here. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the questions. I asked, what's more challenging, work assigned by others or your own assignments? So this time around, I'm going to let us answer the questions first, and then I'm going to read the responses of the people. So what would you consider more challenging? Work assigned by others. Why? Uh... Because, I don't know, like, that's one reason why I like to work for myself. I like to, uh, like, when I, like, I'm going to just say, like, just working for somebody. I'm going to just use that as an example. Mm -hmm. Like, because the way that I think, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm an independent state of mind. So when I'm working for somebody, I feel like I'm building their business. And sometimes people don't appreciate the person down here. Like, the person who own a business don't even know my name. So I'd rather be doing that same work I could be doing for them for myself, even if it's at a smaller scale. You have to have a lot of discipline to do that. And I do. I feel like discipline is the key to life. Okay. So, yeah. So that's why it's difficult for me. Yeah, I, I say working for myself because I have been self-employed for over a year now. Um, it has pros and cons. One of the pros is that it does help me with my mental health a lot. Like, if I need to take a break, I can take one. Because I just don't feel like a one-hour. And it's no offense to anyone because I used to have a one-hour lunch break. And I don't know my life story. Tomorrow, I could have a one-hour lunch break. So, I'm not knocking that. But at the time when I was having a one-hour lunch break, it was not enough for me. Mm -hmm. It took 10 minutes to mentally and physically, like, clock out of work, get to the car, go get the food. Fighting traffic, fighting whatever line it is to get food, come back to the job, eat the food in my car, and then run right back to right. go back to work. Right. That didn't work for me. Now, someone else might say, well, you know, that's not bad. I can go in the car and take a nap, or I stay right up the street from the house. I can go home and eat what I cook. Mm -hmm. You know, every, to each his own. I'm just talking about my own story. Right. Um, but that was a that's a pro, and a con is. I had to be very careful with how I organize my time and my money because it's one of those things like if you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. And when I used to be in sales, being fully commission based taught me that. So, yes, I was working for a company, but it was in the same breath where it's like, okay, if I didn't kill anything, I'm not going to eat. And if I don't eat, then I'm not going to be able to live. Mm -hmm. So that really put the fire under me. But what some of the people said when I asked them what their thing was, a lot of them, I'm scrolling through the answers. I'm not going to read them because it was an either or. Right. But a lot, a majority of them said my own. A couple of people said others, work assigned by others. Um, one person said neither. I'm always up for a challenge. And someone else said probably, probably my own assignments. There isn't the push to get it done. Yeah. So... Most people need that, though, because as you see with the uh, pandemic, like, like most people is really being exposed with their laziness. You, you call it laziness? Them? A lot of people lazy. Like, a lot of people don't want... Look, it's a, it's a, it's a difference. Like, if you don't want to work for somebody, but you're working for yourself and you, you still doing what you got to do, mm -hmm. and then it's another thing of just staying home doing nothing... Just bleeding, uh, bleeding these checks that they get. 
Like, I, but I feel like they deserve these checks. We ain't get the 40 acres, especially us, we ain't get the 40 acres in the view, so I don't really trip on us bleeding it, but still, you gotta do something, bro. If you don't wanna work for somebody else, you still gotta do something. So do you feel that everyone should have some type of, well, I always ask people what is their passion. So let's just say you're killing, you work at, I'm not gonna say company names, so I'm just gonna make up one. Mm -hmm. Let's just say you work for New News Tire Shop, right? You do really great at New News. You're the general manager, great benefits, all of this stuff. But your passion is working on fish, like going fishing, scaling the fish, and, you know, getting it prepared for the family. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking it to say, do you recommend that everyone has a side business to where they're doing something they're passionate about that they can profit from even if they don't want to break off from the comfort of working for someone else but that's if you if you feel like what you're doing ain't what you're supposed to be doing i don't feel like everybody should need that some people need to be working for somebody else because just like i said like if they don't got a job they're not gonna do nothing if they not getting unemployment, when unemployment ran out, they still not going to do nothing. They're going to go back and get a job, mm -hmm. which they should have just been doing. It just depends on your mindset. Okay. Like, I'm able to do that because I'm self-sufficient, and I go on my own. I motivate myself. I've been, at my, I've been like that my whole life, but everybody not like that. Okay. And everybody can't be an entrepreneur. Okay. So... Before I ask this question, did you have anything else that you want to go in detail with with that? Or you think you got everything covered with no, all the bases? Good. You good. So this was a poll question. Do you prefer to work on a schedule or as you go? Hmm. If you got to think about that, I'll let you get a quick nah, hit. Nah, I, I need a schedule, but I usually work as I go. But I need a schedule, though. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. So what percentage do you think said that they're disciplined? And what percent do you think... Okay, I'm reading it backwards. What percent do you think said, I need discipline, which means they need a work schedule, or I am disciplined, I can work as I go? Mm, I feel like more said they need uh, a schedule. Okay. Well, 50... But I need a schedule as in me writing down my uh, what I need to do tomorrow but that's still a schedule well yeah okay okay i thought you were i'm saying about it nicely what he said earlier no disrespect okay yeah check <laughs> me then i'm cool but yes 56 shout out to me 56 percent said i need discipline and 44 percent said i am disciplined yeah so i agree i i need discipline um on my phone i use my notes Mm -hmm. And I have like a to-do list. If you remind me after the recording, I could show you. But I had like a to-do list. And I mean, you saw my outline. So what some people might think with the show, they may think, oh, you know, you're just winging it, you know, doing this and that. But no, I need an outline mm -hmm. um, because it helps me stay on track of how I need the order of everything to go. Now, as far as schedule, like I need a schedule of, oh, I need to get up at 8 I need to go work from 11 to 9. Mm -hmm. I need to have bedtime by, like, no, I don't want this schedule. I'm yeah. disciplined on it. I know when I need to go to bed. I know when I need to nap. I take a nap every day because if I don't, I'm not going to be chipper and fun. I'm going to be, ooh. <laughs> you take a nap? I take a nap. Damn. Now, this good. week, I haven't taken any naps. Um. Because with fasting, with me not eating those heavy foods, I do have more energy. And again, y'all, I'm not being a salesperson, but I am being a salesperson. This is just me being real with y'all. This Noni juice really does help me. Like, I'm realizing it now on the show. Like, I really do feel good. Um, but I do have a lot of energy from eating the plant-based foods and not eating the heavier foods that I have. So, I didn't take a nap this week. Um, what's something else? I do have self-care time. I talk to myself. And I say, well, hey, when I say talk to myself, I mean, like, Chantal, I'm so proud of you, girl. Like, you are really getting things done. Yeah. I have seen the transformation. You are doing so good. I read my affirmations in my phone. I um, do my devotions. And I don't have a scheduled time where I do them. At one point when I was first starting off, I would say, okay, I'm going to set my alarm for 8 o'clock. And I'm going to read my Bible. And then I'm going to do this and that. And that did not work. 
So now my new rule is my schedule is to read my Bible each day. But if I want to read it at 3 o'clock, I want to read it at 11 o'clock at night. As long as I got it in, that's all that matters. Right. Next question. How do you not let your performance anxiety get the best of you? Ooh. Oh, that was to me? If you don't want to go why first again. Why would I like that? Like why would? Like I ain't know that was to me. Answer, answer Are you busting easy. yourself? Nah. That's not self-love. You got you to gotta uplift yourself. Nah. I'm busting <laughs> yourself. Nah, I'm good. That was some other shit. Uh, can you tell me again? <laughs> And my bad, I don't even know if you can cuss. I yeah, I, I we, we, we talk on here the way we talk. The only reason why my mouth is pretty lenient tonight is because I'm fasting. Okay. I slipped up and said a word earlier today. Oh, okay. I'm not going to edit it because I'm not perfect. And yeah. I want to show people I'm not perfect. I'm no, trying. Yeah. We can, yeah, I need to know the question. Again. But before I read it, do you remember um, this video on Instagram? Oh, with the Breakfast Club. And they were trying to get Webby to say the names. Charlamagne the God. Mm -hmm. You sound Sorry, just man. like Webby right now. Out of control. Shout out to Sweet Webby. Sweet Jones Jr. Shout out to Webby. Say, say Sweet Jones. What, what does he say? Sweet Jones Jr.? Yeah, Sweet, Jan yeah, Sweet Jones Jr. You sound just like Webby. Out of control. When we get done, we're going to play, Um, what's the name of this song? It's Cussing in it. Uh, all the songs. Okay, I bought a girl till she real tired, and I ain't messing with her unless she real fine. Yeah. I got a lot of money. I ain't got a. I want you to sing that we get done. We gonna turn this into yeah, a studio yeah. when we get done. Oh shit. We I love that song. I got that. That's what it's called. I got that. Yeah. So when we get done recording, I'm gonna make you uh do a little booth session since you always freestyle. That's okay with you. I'm with it. Okay. I think I am. Don't hold me to it. <laughs> Okay. I do a line or two. Okay. So, let's see. I'm going to pause this. Okay, so the question was, how do you not let your performance anxiety get the best of you? So, some of the people said, taking deep breaths, keep performing, it gets better over time. Affirmations, I start mentally preparing hours before, working independently, List everything out, then identify what's most important and execute. Self-care every day. I just power through and shower right after because I always sweat a lot during, LOL. I try to think about the good things in life and not let the right now affect me. My personal favorite, weed. Pray before I do anything, another personal favorite. And try to relax and pray about it. Right. What you think about those answers? Those sound pretty legit? Yeah, it makes sense. I agree with all of them, especially the self care, self care, prayer, and the happy candy. Yeah, <laughs> prayer works though. It does. Like, if you actually believe what you saying, what you praying about, then it really works. You will feel it. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, pray, and you also can manifest biblically, manifest, and just believe it. Like that's why I said, power in the tongue is real. Believe for real. Yes. Come on, yep. Hey, I'll turn this into a congregation over here. I've caused, had to do an altar call. What? <laughs> I'm taking my offering right now. <laughs> so, the next question is a poll question. I'm going to let you guess the number first. Do you prefer working behind the scenes or in front of others? How many people do you think say in front of others? And how many people do you think say behind the scenes as far as percentages? I ain't gonna lie. All these questions that you've been asking, the poll questions, mm -hmm. I, I rate them all high, like in the high 80s and 90s. Like behind the scenes. What percent? Are you saying the high number likes working in behind the scenes? Yeah. You do? I think so. Okay. Well, that's wrong. Oh. Okay, never mind. Go ahead. Mm-mm. It's wrong. Okay. You're fine. I am good. <laughs> you have to repeat this grade. Um, so, 53% said they would prefer working front line, and 47% said background. So, actually, it was almost half and half. What, what do you, okay. what, what's the facial expression? Talk to me. Because I still feel like they lying. How do you <laughs> tell somebody that they're lying about I how can't they I feel? Can't, I can't tell them that they lying, but... You, you told like them they lying like three times tonight. <laughs> I, 
You gonna get some DMs. Man, cause we could go to the street right now and ask ten people. I guarantee you, at least seven of them gonna tell you that they rather not be in front of people. Okay, clap back, mommy. Why go out to the street when I set my pretty tail on Instagram and posted a poll and people just press their honest answer? Man, people say anything on the internet. Nice, people say anything. Cause they would, wrong. though. Okay. They would. Mm -hmm. Just like dudes mm -hmm. would holler at a girl on the internet, but you get you get him in her face, he don't even know what to say. That's why I say it's a cow. That's another young word. Let me stop. Young. So how old are you? <laughs> I'm young too, but I'm saying <laughs> I don't say I don't say them words. I'm just saying stupid stuff. Okay, yes, yeah, sir. but let's yeah. Performance anxiety. I call y'all bluff though, but y'all can y'all can Performance anxiety, saying things you don't normally wrong. say, like you what you say earlier. Yeah, that guys stop be, being themselves. That might be nervous. <laughs> I might be nervous. Why are you nervous? This the glass mic. Nobody's nervous. You got me saying just... weird words on even. Next say. time you come back, I won't be fasting, and we can have some some relaxations with the hookah and the happy candy. Yeah, see, because I, I get nervous too. You know what it probably? Is? I'm probably trying to. I'm probably saying these words that I don't say in uh in front of my cuss words. If you would like to curse, you can I'm curse. I'm trying to be politically correct. I know you said that before, but I'm okay. trying to work on myself. That's, look, I'm not upset with it. Right. Now, if one slips out, then don't beat yourself up. Okay. Because I told you earlier, one slipped out on me, and I'm, I kept going. All right. <laughs> I said, sorry, and I kept going. Can't cry but spill milk. So, this one is actually the last question. Don't cry. I know. Um, This one says, does your best work happen planned or suddenly? I'm going to give you one last try to guess these people's answers without you telling them how to think. How many percentage do you think said plan, and how many do you think said wing it? Um. Okay, most of these been the fifty forty. So I was. This one statistics coming in. That's logistics. It went from from math. To <laughs> I'm gonna say fifty seven percent said plan. I don't know. Do you think you was right? I, I I think I'm right by the way that you responded to that. How, right? how did I respond? Uh, why are you doubting yourself? No, you, you just me, said I think I'm right because I responded. Right, you said am I wrong? To you gotta have listen. So I gotta be close. One of the the piece of advice I can give for tonight's episode with battling performance anxiety is confidence. No, I think I'm close. I'm saying. I said, okay. You don't have to think, you need to know. Okay. I, know I know my I'm answer close. is right. And it's exactly 57% on a dot. Mark my words. Okay, day out of confidence, damn. Plan was 52%. Ooh. You were close 5%. That it's not bad. bad. No, no. Bad. I said daily, damn. But it was right, it was right though. More yeah, people. that's what I said, had okay. confidence. Okay, yeah. If you wrong, you like, hey, I was wrong. You was right. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I can own it. <laughs> There we go. And then 48% said wingy. So, again, half and half, like you said. Right. So, some of us are still battling performance anxiety. And some of us aren't. And we're making the best of it. Right. So, what, what did you think about the questions? Some of us still lying. Huh? I'm just going to let you talk. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. One no, thing what, I've been no, learning to again. say is, okay. No, say it again. What, what would you say? See? What did I think about the questions? Yeah, what was your take on the questions? I think they were good. You I think they were? Yeah, they cool. were dope questions. So this is one of my favorite parts of the show with the listener letters. Mm -hmm. This is where we get to hear the people come in and talk. Um, they We do unscripted events, our advice. So some people write in to vent and some write in to get advice from myself or the guests. Right. So if you all are interested in writing into the show, you can write in your letters to info at theglassmic.com or you can DM us on Instagram or Facebook at theglassmic. In the subject line, you can place advice or unscripted events. You can also place your IG handle if you want some followers or if you want to be anonymous, that is fine as well. So I'm going to read one letter for the sake of time. Pulling it up now. And this letter was sent in by I am Jillian Simmons. Hey, girl. I was recently promoted into a job that I didn't qualify for. Or should I say that I didn't think I qualified for? Not that I lack confidence 
It was out of my normal. Going into the position, my peers had so much experience. The language was even different. My anxiety kicked in immediately, but I learned that I learned that's the trick of the devil. Allow him to make you second guess yourself and question everything as if God didn't place you exactly where you deserve to be. And he's given all the tools necessary. We just have to step into our own and give him all the praise, even with mistakes. We are not our mistakes. Shaking off the fear, the what ifs, the hows, and fully operating in who and what we were called to be. I take that with me in life moving forward. Relationships, friendships, partnerships, remain confident and remain a student. Okay. She she just gave us a word. Look, I don't have anything to say after that. That's all right. Other than amen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did I just say earlier? Confidence. Mm -hmm. Whether you're right or you're wrong, you're right. Right. But Dr. Sue said that, I believe. Yeah. Green eggs and ham. Come on. So, yeah, just basically just have confidence in yourself. No one knows. It's been a many times where I've said something on the show, and I go back and like, I think I should have corrected that. But people are listening like, I didn't hear nothing wrong. I think you did well. And I'm like, you think so? I'm critiquing. Like, we are our own, our own biggest critics. Mm -hmm. right. And we are human. We have the right to say, I don't know. I messed up. You know? Yeah. And if we all just sit back and realize it, tonight, everybody should know now, everyone has performance anxiety. Even the greats. We were talking about yeah, Michael everybody. Jackson earlier. Mm -hmm. I think he has super performance anxiety. But, of course, he's been in tons of arenas, performing with his family. You'd be like, how? Right. But he just has the confidence. Or yeah. had the confidence. Rest in peace, Mike. Um, That's because he perfected his craft. So he going to be confident whenever it's time to go in action. But him in an everyday life ain't like he is on stage. So, that's true. Yeah, you're right. So, again, if you all want to write in a letter, email info at the glass mic, or you can write us in a DM. And make sure in the subject line you put unscripted event or advice. And, again, you can place your IG handle, or you can remain anonymous. The choice is yours. So, did you have any performance anxiety tonight with me? Nope. <laughs> no, nah, I kind of did. But, could, well, it's basically when I say I didn't want to cuss. Okay. Which I usually do a lot of, but not just blatantly, just for no reason, but just in a, you know, context. But, yeah, I was trying to be politically correct a lot, so. Well, I thank you for that. That means a lot to me. Because maybe they saved me from saying some bad words. You right. know? It's like a mirror effect. Already. Yes. I'm glad I could do that for you. So I I know that I messed up earlier about not introducing your name. So I, I want to go ahead and give you the floor where not only can you tell us about your name, but any plugins you need to know, your social media, um, your YouTube, the floor is now yours. Now I got performance anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> nah, my <laughs> yeah. Ooh, nah, my name is Shane. No, you can find me. You can find me on YouTube at Casino Life, like with a L Y F E. Casino Life Empire on YouTube. The Savage Truth Podcast on YouTube. Truth as in T R O O F. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Shano Reloaded, S H A N O Reloaded, Twitter, Shano Reloaded, Facebook, Casino Life Empire. And yeah, I'm just here. Okay. And my phone number is, I'm just playing. Look, I just looked down. If you want to get out his number. <laughs> nah, that's goofy. Go ahead. You from up north? But I appreciate y'all. And I'm from West Texas. You did say West Texas. I don't want to hear people from up north say goofy. I mean, Goofy's a word everywhere. You know, but... Goofy, Goofy is actually my favorite cartoon character. That's why it's in my vocabulary. Okay. I don't know what go up over there, but yeah. To each his own. You see how I didn't say you were wrong? Yeah. Are your feelings more valid? This is a shame on me, y'all. See how you have your definition of Goofy? Yeah. I'm just telling you that. So you won't tell anybody here on that that they, you know, feelings aren't valid. Oh, no, for sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying it in a sweet way. I corrected. No, for sure. It's all good. 
Mm-hmm. That's how you gotta talk to me though. So I appreciate it. That's how I talk to everyone. Yeah, but no I'm saying what like that makes me feel comfortable. I don't get I'm not offended at all. I try I, to make I, sure I, I don't. It though. Yeah, because I just talk to people the same way. Because I, as much confidence as I have, I am a very shy person. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sensitive. And I know, like, with us having the light, the camera, microphone, headphones, I don't want to feel like I'm being scolded with all of this stuff. And it's like I'm a deer in headlights. Like, I'm like this. Or I might get belligerent and be like, who, who are you talking to? Yeah. This is my platform, you know? Right, like, right. I don't want to do that. So right. I just talk to others the way I would want them to talk to me. That's why I came like I came, how I said, with my performance anxiety coming on here. I know when I watched you previously before I came here, you said you ain't had no filter. So I said, <laughs> let me tread lightly. But I'm not mean. No, you're not. Like, you made me feel comfortable more and more. Like, even when I first came, you made me feel comfortable. I knew it, I was in the right place. Oh, thank so you. Good. My help comes from above. It's not me now. I always tell people, if it's something that's wrong or bad, it came from Chantal. But anything that was great came from the one above. So, I do thank you for that. All right. And guys, I want to thank y'all for tuning into the glass mic where there is no script, just transparent talk. I also want to thank to thanks tonight's sponsors for all the goodies and the great things that they have provided for the show. And I also want to thank them for supporting my vision and the brand. I also want to thank you to the listeners for just tuning in and listening to us talk. The okay. southern accent that y'all tune into every time. Y'all like it. I love it. <laughs> So I do this for my family, I do this for my friends, but most importantly, I do this for the people. I'm Chantal, and as always, I love y'all. Hey, y'all. So